Pop OS. Pop Bang Score. Pop Bang. That'd for sure be a Unix in-joke. I mean... Underscore could be sneak or score. I don't know. Let me just slip out my PDP-11 and unpack the Esoterica. But Esoterica actually is not what Pop! OS represents. The most surprising thing about this distro is that I was surprised. Behind me, I've borrowed Eric Raymond's System76 system to test it heavily. My initial review on that hardware is out, and the link is in the description. If you want, you should probably check that out. It's pretty cool, if I do say so myself. But even before Eric's monster 32-core Threadripper system has made its way to my test bench, uh, I was already sort of poking around with Pop! OS. It had my curiosity, my attention, even, maybe, as I'd actually set up a couple of test systems, both a laptop and a desktop, in order to see what Pop! OS was all about, because, you know, it's just, it's another derivative of Ubuntu. Do we really need another Linux distro? Pop! OS was created by System76, the people that built this computer, but System76 is successful enough with it, I think, that Canonical should really sit up and take notice. There's, there's a lot of stuff that could be reincorporated into Ubuntu that people would probably really like. Now, while Pop! OS is bundled with System76 hardware, you can install it pretty much anywhere. I mean, it's Linux. It seems to work better on newer hardware. I tried it initially on an old Ivy Bridge laptop with NVIDIA graphics. It was an NVIDIA 620M and an Ivy Bridge Core i7. But I needed a BIOS update on that laptop to really get it going because I don't think that I'd updated the BIOS since launch day, which is probably bad, but kind of scared of that whole Meltdown Spectre thing. Didn't want to lose the performance. So the, the experience on Linux laptops with an integrated GPU and discrete graphics for Pop! OS actually is surprisingly good. Better than just about any other Linux distro that I've tried. And if you have that hardware, generally I think you've had a second class experience with Linux in general, at least until you get it set up. So even Ubuntu on the latest, I really think Canonical has got to get more hardware sooner to do testing, because even on desktop, I mean, we've written guides on the level one forum to get around, you know, problems and glitches and weird stuff. The, the AMD Radeon RX 590, for example, uh, Radeon 7 just had a regression with the Linux kernel, and these are things that could be avoided with more testing. But on the Pop! OS side, System76 has gone out of their way to work on compatibility. It took, uh, you know, a bunch of the little quality of life things. Now for laptop users, it's pretty much perfect out of the box, at least the ones that have the hardware that they've tested for. And those specific users that have an iGPU like Intel Graphics plus NVIDIA, uh, it's not just that it works, you've also got power management and power management that works well, which is not always the case with laptops. It's like, oh, the laptop runs, but the battery, you know, it gets hot and the battery's dead in like an hour. They've done a lot of improvements around the distros for better hardware support. And so, yeah, sure, it works best if your hardware is similar to what System76 ships, but Pop! OS runs really well on just about all the hardware that I've tested, which is one of the things that surprised me because, well, I mean, I guess it's just System76 uses standard hardware. Now, laptops are a special case, you might think, but to that I would say no. I want temperature control and fan control and power management to work out of the box, even on a desktop system, especially when we're talking about a system like a Threadripper 2990WX, a 32-core monster. I have been down those rabbit holes of fan profiles and power management, and it is just pure insanity. Lesser men have gone mad. Not only does System76 work to stay on top of that, they're working with vendors like Gigabyte, and this is the designated motherboard after all, and doing a lot of work, really as much as they can, to provide things like sane fan management and, you know, defaults that make sense for systems like these. The CPU Power Manager a piece of software is actually something from System76, and it works great, so kudos to the System76 engineering team for doing that. I think gold pips for everybody at the next Captain Picard day, because it's really well done. Now, again, this 32-core monster, it's a pre-built system. You just, you buy it at retail. And with the same parts 
that I would select for myself if I were doing a DIY build. You know, we've got the Designair, high-end memory. This is dual 2080s for machine learning, which is gonna be the next video. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But more importantly, this thing does not sound like a leaf blower when it's running full tilt on all 64 threads. And that's because somebody has taken the time to provide the appropriate CPU power management and CPU state, and they've actually tested those different default profiles to make sure that it works. So. This combination of hardware and software is a huge win for the open source community. Now, what about under the hood? I mean, I'm not really talking about the distro stuff, but I kinda am. How's it different than Ubuntu? Well, first, there's the theme. As you can see behind me, it's uh, quite a bit flatter uh, with less muted colors. I mean, that's, how can you not notice that it's pretty much it's way different but it's more than that i mean everybody's like oh it's visually no it's not just visually different that's actually the least important difference for gaming because gaming seems to be you know all that anybody cares about these days because because gaming uh there's actually quite a bit of changes under the hood but it's really just little tweaks little quality of life improvements like noobs always trip over like you know vulcan and vulcan versions you get the 32 and the 64-bit version and there's mesa so, you know, contrarians would complain to me, hey, you know, Wendell, you, you don't need to install a PPA or do any of this stuff. Ubuntu is basically okay out of the box. You just need to wait for the thing and wait for the kernel updates. But uh, you're not entirely wrong. But I think with Pop! OS, where they've made a lot of those choices for you, you're going to have a better experience because those choices are the same choices that I would make. Those are the same choices that I recommend. It's like, okay, you've got Ubuntu installed. Let's make a bunch of tweaks. So with Pop! OS, you get 32 and 64-bit Vulkan out of the box. And with Steam, there's no like flat pack stuff. You just go to the pop shop, hit install, and you're pretty much good to go. So now with those libraries, by default, a lot of headaches are over before they before they even start. It's kind of like pre-installing DirectX. I mean, everything you need uh, on the Windows platform for DirectX, I mean, cringe, sort of cringe, yeah. But it's pre-installed. But Steam, what about Steam? I mean, how do you do this? Well, it's, it's in the pop shop. You just, what's, you know, it, that replaces Canonical Software Center. I think it's borrowed mainly from elementary OS, but but don't, don't quote me on that. I think it's elementary's app center. It's what it looks like. It's what it feels like, but I didn't really dig into that. I probably should have checked that. It's probably on GitHub somewhere. Now from the app center, you can install things like, you know, the GNOME tweak tool and Steam and everything else. There's a lot of fun new users can have with that and never hit the command line. So what's the worst thing about Pop! OS? Well, I think that, I think that goes back to Stallman's deal with the devil. I mean, Linux is, ubiquitous these days it's literally everywhere except the desktop and Richard Stallman who if you haven't heard of him before he's sort of an uncompromising protectorate of freedom of compute um, in so much as computers are extensions of like the human brain and ourselves you never really want any aspect of something that's an extension of your brain to be under someone else's control that's how we have like the opioid crisis probably you just don't want that for your brain. And so he's sort of staunchly against anything that's not completely open. And so Linux is open source, of course, but you know, everything System76 is doing is furthering open source, but there is some hardware that's not fully open. It requires closed source drivers. It's not possible to really know what that closed software is doing. I mean, sometimes you might hear someone call that a binary blob, or sometimes you might hear someone you know, complain about something, but in order to have a first class experience with those laptops with NVIDIA GPUs, you have to give up some freedom, the freedom to tinker with the software under the hood uh, or the, the software that really powers the hardware at a low level. And that's in order to have that first class experience. Now, Stallman is worried that you, the end user, might not realize what's going on if you just listen to somebody that says, ah, just install Pop! OS and all your problems are gonna go away. This is, you know, an important battle for software freedom, but, you know, I mean, for sure, most people only talk about it in the context of things like graphics cards. But, uh, you know, it's not just graphics cards. I mean, AMD GPUs are more open, but there's still some binary, there's still some componentry there that's running on the graphics card. 
but it's not really just graphics cards. I don't want to talk about graphics cards. It's also like the system management firmware, in our case, you know, from AMD. And the firmware on the SSD, that's something nobody ever really talks about, but the, the firmware that's on the SSD is also proprietary and can m m ruin your day. There's, there's demos of that. System76 is doing a lot of hard work to try to cover those cases though and to deal with it in the community. I mean, there's some that are abandoning the x86 platform altogether uh, for those reasons, but uh, not everyone is ready to abandon x x86. But System76, from what I can tell, seems to be doing a pretty good job of trying to get away from the platform management software and the binary blobs as much as possible. So definitely that's something you should worry about and keep in the back of your mind and never forget about. But in a lot of ways, Pop! OS is doing well, System76 and Pop! OS are doing things to try to mitigate that because you can definitely tell that it's in the back of their mind and they're worried about it. And as long as it's in the back of your mind and you're worried about it, that's all I can ask for right now. Now, also as part of this review, I got an update to 19.04, Pop! OS 19.04, because the Ubuntu folks rolled out 19.04. And actually the System76 people delayed it for a couple of days because they ran into some bugs. And yes, 19.04 from Canonical had some bugs. So. Good job for the System76 people pulling a long shift all night or whatever to get that out the door, but with the bugs fixed and especially on their hardware so you'd have a smooth experience. So we need more of that. So even more gold pips for everybody at System76 for the next Captain Picard day, A+. Now check out System76 for awesome pre-builds. My next video is a test run of this system with machine learning and the dual 2080s, which by the way, is another thing the System76 has made dead easy. All right, so Pop! OS is good for gaming. Pop! OS is great for machine learning. What about VFIO? Well, we've got another separate video coming out on machine learning. So it's gonna show you some stuff about machine learning for Pop! OS. They've done some stuff to make that easier. But also VFIO, get a brand new level one guide for VFIO, running a Windows virtual machine, passing through your graphics card. Now our System76 machine has got two gigabyte RTX 2080s. They're beastly car. I mean, the 2080, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty nuts. A lot of horsepower there. But it can be tricky to have two identical graphics cards and pass one through to a VM because the module takes a, uh, a, a, a vendor and device ID, which is the same between the two graphics cards. Well, not to worry. The guide that's already posted on the Level 1 forum has a step-by-step -step workaround for that and some other information. Now, I'm still working on filling out the particulars of the guide for the video. and I'm going to release the video as soon as the guide's done because the video's pretty much already there. But if you got any tips and tricks you want to share or just look over the guide or do it yourself or get ahead of the class even before there's a video, well, the guide's on the Level 1 forum. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. Oh, and uh, the 2990, the Threadripper, you know there's that performance regression bug? Yeah, there's another post on the Level 1 forum where I show this system running a Windows virtual machine with 32 cores, 64 threads, and then later 56 threads. That Windows virtual machine for Indigo and 7-Zip is faster than bare metal. That's because Windows doesn't handle that many NUMA nodes correctly. So that's a story for another day. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1, and I'll see you later.